Welcome to the introductory video of Linux system programming course by Linux Corner. First, let's see why you should learn Linux. 1. Better career opportunity. How? If you google for next big things in technology, probably you will come across following items. Artificial intelligence, data science, AR, VR, blockchain and IoT. Linux is not at all listed here. Then how it is going to help you in your career? Because all these next bus technologies require a robust infrastructure providing massive processing power and storage. Linux is a preferred operating system to run the infrastructure. Why Linux? Why not Windows or Mac? The main reason is Linux is open source. Thus, for any change you require, it can be done by yourself instead of waiting for the vendor to release the patch. Even if you are not going to pursue your career in Linux, learning it will help you to become a better coder. Because learning the Linux inherently provides you the knowledge of underlying hardware and systems to help you to make better decisions while writing user space applications. Here are some mentions about bad user space applications due to lack of system knowledge. This is written by the great Greg KH in the preface of Robert Love's famous Linux system programming book. This one is from Uldrich Tepper's What Every Programmer Should Know About Memory paper. And here Greg KH finishes his preface with a nice idea to write application code that doesn't suck. What is mean by system programming? What are you going to learn in this course? First, you will learn to write system software. System software leaves at very low level of an application stack, which directly interacts with core libraries and the kernel itself. It is a very important part of an application because however the way you optimize your application's logic, if system interaction isn't done properly, it can severely impact the operation and performance of the entire application. You will learn about system calls. System calls are the interfaces that user space applications are using to talk to operating system. You will learn to write faster and better code. Using correct system calls and library functions will save great deal of time and energy. Last but not least, knowing system in and out will let you know about the loopholes too. You can put together the knowledge in a creative way to hack or break the system. Before starting the course, let's have a brief look at the history of Linux. Back in 1991, a student at University of Helsinki was testing the task switching capability of Intel 386 processor. He was initially using Minix, a Unix derivative for his project, but he couldn't take it further because of Minix's licensing. He tried other alternatives like BSD and HERD, but everything had their own shortcomings. So the student sat and wrote his own operating system himself. The initial goal, my very personal goal, to be able to run a similar environment on my computer that I had grown used to at, at the university computers. And I could not find anything that suited me for that. Right? So having been doing computers for all my life, basically, at that point I just decided that I'll do my own. The first release of Linux was on August 25, 1991 in a simple Usenet mail. The simplicity of Linux attracted many engineers and they started porting many GNU tools to Linux and also started adding additional functionalities to the Linux OS itself. Eventually, Linux has grown as the de facto operating system for the open source world. Thanks for joining me in this course. Please subscribe to this channel for upcoming videos.